A stunning new map of the brain could revolutionize our understanding of how it works. Researchers say the new models have already uncovered 100 previously unknown regions of the brain. They say it could revolutionize our understanding of our own mind, and also lead to radical new types of brain surgery. For years, doctors have had reliable charts of the body and its organs, blood circulation, digestive system, nerves and the like, but always with one frustrating gray zone, the brain. Now a team of neuroscientists, computer specialists and engineers said they had compiled what could be the most accurate map yet of the mysterious expanse between our ears. In the process, they discovered nearly 100 previously unreported regions of the organ's wrinkly outer layer, called the cerebral cortex or gray matter. These new insights and tools should help to explain how our cortex evolved and the roles of its specialized areas in health and disease said Bruce Cuthbert of the U.S.-based National Institutes of Health, which co-funded the research, published in the journal Nature. One day, it may enable unprecedented precision in brain surgery, he added. Researchers have now mapped 180 distinct areas in our brain's outer mental, or cortex, more than twice the number previously known. They have also developed software that automatically detects the fingerprint of each of these areas in an individual's brain scans. Funded by the National Institutes of Health through its Human Tome project, this software correctly mapped the areas by incorporating data from multiple non-invasive brain imaging measures that corroborated each other. The new study identified, with a nearly 97% detection rate, 97 new cortex areas per hemisphere, in addition to confirming 83 that were previously known. Earlier studies of cortex organization often used just one measure, such as examining post-mortem tissue with a microscope. To make this map researchers pulled data from 210 healthy young adults of both sexes. The researchers combined measures of the thickness of the cortex and the amount of insulation around neuronal cables, with MRS scans of the resting brain and of the brain performing simple tasks, such as listening to a story. We ended up with 180 areas in each hemisphere, but we don't expect that to be the final number, Matthew Glasser, who led the research, said. In some cases, we identified a patch of cortex that probably could be subdivided, but we couldn't confidently draw borders with our current data and techniques. In the future, researchers with better methods will subdivide that area. We focused on borders we are confident will stand the test of time. Some of those areas are clearly involved in particular tasks, such as 55B, which lights up with activity when a person hears a story. Others contain a map of a person's field of vision, or are involved in controlling movement. Most areas probably will never be identified with a single function, because they don't do just one thing but instead coordinate information from many different signals. The situation is analogous to astronomy where ground-based telescopes produced relatively blurry images of the sky before the advent of adaptive optics and space telescopes, said Glaser. For more than a century, Initially using nothing but conjecture, people have sought to delineate the different brain areas and their function. In the 1800s, so-called phrenologists divided the organ into sections controlling certain senses and character traits. The region responsible for destructiveness, for example, hovered somewhere over the ear, with parental love at the back of the head, and hope located in the crown. This now defunct branch dot out as dissection and other methods of scientific examination gain ground. In 1909, German neurologist Kerbinian Broadman published perhaps the best known brain map, based on the discovery that different regions were made up of different cell types. Broadman's map, which divided the cerebral cortex into a few dozen areas, is still in use today. It has been known for a while now, roughly, which regions control voluntary muscle movement, language, vision, sound, and aspects of personality, for example. Yet scientists still disagree on how many brain regions there are, even more so on what each of them do. Before the new map, there were 83 known areas in each half of the brain, a number now boosted to 180, said the research team. This was made possible by combining data from different imaging methods used to study the brains of 210 adults. The researchers then tested their new software on a new group of another 210 adults, and found it could accurately identify the mapped regions in their brains too, even in spite of individual variability. The HCP team set out to banish this blurriness by using multiple, 
precisely aligned, magnetic resonance imaging modalities to measure cortical architecture, activity, connectivity, and topography in a group of 210 healthy participants. These measures, including cortex thickness, cortex myelin content, task and resting state functional MRI, cross-validated each other. The findings were, in turn, confirmed in an additional independent sample of 210 healthy participants. Even though some cortex areas turned out to be atypically located in a small minority of subjects, the data-derived algorithms incorporated into the software were able to successfully map them. The ability to discriminate individual differences in the location, size, and topology of cortical areas from differences in their activity or connectivity should facilitate understanding of how each property is related to behavior and genetic underpinnings, added Glaser.